Good afternoon, Sammy Ryder Academy. My name's Mr. Savage, and I'm head of year 10. My whole school assembly for this week is on resilience. I wanted to talk about a man called Ray Crone. And I discovered Ray Crone when I was studying abroad um, and I was studying in Arizona in a town called Flagstaff at Northern Arizona University. So while I was at Flagstaff, you were able to take any courses that you wanted to take. That went from downhill snowboarding, uh, that went from volleyball, criminal investigation, um, television news media, lots of different courses that I wasn't able to study in the UK. And I took a course in criminal justice with someone called Professor Thomas Street. Now, Professor Street was an ex LA County Sheriff. He had seen and done it all, and he was very happy to share those stories with his class. One of the stories that he shared was that he had got someone off of death row in America. Now, we don't have the death penalty in the United Kingdom, but in America and several other countries around the world, they do. And that means that it's the most severe punishment you can have where if you have been deemed to commit a certain type of crime, you can be put to death. He told us about a man named Ray Crone, who was innocent of all crimes, but had been arrested and put on death row. And he told us how he'd got Ray Crone off, and he informed us that Ray would be coming to speak to the students at the school. And I made my way to the auditorium to hear him speak. What I heard was one of the most amazing speeches, lectures, that you've ever heard. And it was about a man who at the age of 35 was arrested for a crime he didn't commit and had to go to prison for over 10 years and was a fairly average person, nothing too out of the ordinary going on. But hearing about Ray's story, um, I moved back to the UK um, to do my final year at university. And in my final year, I was asked to, um, I had to write a dissertation. I was going to write it on 1930s Hollywood fiction. And my professor said to me at the time, no disrespect, but what have you got to say that's new and interesting about 1930s Hollywood fiction? And the answer was, probably not much. And my professor asked me about something else that had happened during my trip that was new, different, original to my experience. And I started to talk about Ray Crone, and I started to share information, and I started to talk in great detail about his case. And my professor said, well, it sounds like you know what you need to write about. So for my dissertation, um, which is a document that you do when you go to university, mine was 13 and a half thousand words, and it was about Ray Crone, his case, and the death penalty, and my argument for the abolition of the death penalty, meaning why we would get rid of the death penalty, or why we should get rid of the death penalty. So I wrote my dissertation, I got the highest mark I've ever got um, in school, in university, um, and I actually got a first for my dissertation essay, which is where you write an essay about what you're going to write for your dissertation, and two marks off a first for my dissertation. That was because I cared and I was passionate and I wasn't writing about something because I had to, I was writing about something because I wanted to. So when I had to give this assembly on resilience, there was no one else that I could think about to talk about other than Ray. So in a moment, I'm gonna show you a brief documentary that I filmed with some friends at Ray's house where Ray talks a little bit about his story and gives you a brief overview into what happened. After that, I'm thrilled to say that we will actually be able to hear live from Ray Crone in our virtual SRA assembly. And I'm gonna ask Ray some questions about resilience and also about advice that he would give to members of our community about how to remain um, resilient even in difficult times. December 31st, 1991, New Year's Eve, four o'clock. We're all suddenly hearing the screech of brakes, the sound of doors slamming. I looked over, it's a band load of police officers, full ride gear, guns drawn, threw me on the ground, handcuffed me and arrested me for murder, kidnapping, and sexual assault. The victim had been bitten, Kim and Cohen had been bitten. Uh, they used a bite mark expert at trial to testify that marks of the body matched my teeth. It was just a three and a half day trial. I was called a monster, an unremorseful killer and I was sentenced to death. How do you apologize for something you didn't do? Where's the justice in it? He was the 100th person who had been released from death row. 
they're not just doing this to bad people. This can happen to anybody. Let's do something about that. Hi, Ray. Thank you so much for joining us today in our assembly. We're really, really thrilled to have you. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. Ray, our assembly today is about resilience. You spent 10 years in prison for a crime you didn't commit and three of those years on death row. Could you speak to how you were able to maintain your resilience in that situation and how you managed to keep going? Well, first, we have to acknowledge we all have trials and tribulations in our life. It's just the intensity, the duration that uh, might vary uh, for us. Uh, and I, I can tell you one thing, first off, and, the, and, and this thing was obvious that I knew I was innocent. I believe God knew that I was innocent. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my family believed in me. I was 35 years old. They knew who I was, what I had done mm -hmm. in my life, and were able to stand beside me. I only had to tell them once I didn't do it. They believed me. I know my mom had sent the Bible and I found strength in the stories of like Job and Jonah, you know, the horrors that befell them with their faith in God and still in the end were better off for it. And, uh, and I also realized that I didn't know anything about the justice system. I believed in the death penalty. I believed our trials were fair. I believed they got the right person. And I had to learn about a justice system. At the age of 35, I read law books. But mm -hmm. it gave me strength to know, I think, most of all two things. The, the, besides the support of family and, and my uh, my emotional strength, uh, it also realized that I'm not the only one this happened to. I realized that I was not the only person who was on death row as an innocent person. There was other people that I've met there through working with, with other, uh, there was 120 on Arizona's death row. That also gave me the strength to know that it's not just me. There's others out there that have to fight this. And I had to be strong for my family and my friends who were standing mm -hmm. up for me. Uh, I didn't know where the help was going to come from. And that's something mm -hmm. we all have to realize we can't all of us can't do it alone mm -hmm. but we also you know can't rely on somebody else to do it for us we have to be part of the program both thanks. together thanks for that ray my final question to you is we've got members of our community students parents staff um, who have had difficulties during the lockdown during um, the covid19 pandemic what advice would you give to our members of our community about how to remain resilient moving forwards. I, I tell you, it, it's it's easier said than done. I couldn't write a book exactly what I did, but I can mm. say you have to stay the course. I played sports in my life, and for those that played sports, you didn't want to let your team down. You might not be the hero to win the game, but you certainly didn't want to be the one that cost mm. your team the game. And mm -hmm. so you always try to stay in there and do the best you can and, and be honest with what's happening. And the more you're mm. educated, the, the more honest you can be. But, I, but I'll tell you, as you go through those difficult times, and, 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 I, and I, I use the example like in our car, that's why the windshield's bigger than the rear view mirror. What's, a, what's, our, our, what's ahead of us, our life is ahead of us. That's why we mm -hmm. look out the windshield, we look forward. We keep moving forward. We re refer to our rear view mirror now and then to remember and reflect on where we went, where we were, where we've been, but not to keep, continue to dwell there. We mm -hmm. have to dwell in the, in the future. We have to see the big pictures that's in front of us and keep searching and keep reaching and keep driving on. That's a really great analogy, Ray. Is that a Ray Crone original? <laughs> it is as far as I know. <laughs> Ray, thank you so much for being part of our assembly today on resilience. We've really appreciated having you here and we wish you all the best with all of the work that you continue to do in regards to the abolition of the death penalty. Thank you so much. Much, Thomas. It's a great honor to be there. To your students, hello, a shout out to you. I wish you well in the future. If there's ever anything I can do, please holler. I hope you've enjoyed today's assembly on resilience and learn a little bit more about Ray Crone and his story. Most of us will not go through the experiences that Ray went through, but all of us will have our own difficult experiences that we go through on a daily basis, or it could be something else that pops up in our lives. And so it's really important that I think if we think about Ray's message, you have self-belief, but also you trust in other people. But also while trusting other people, you have to act yourself. You have to put steps in place. You have to have agency. You have to move forward. You have to take steps. And that means not simply sitting back and accepting what's happening to you, but rather putting steps in place to say, what can I do, no matter how small, to make that change? Thanks very much for your attention today. And I hope you have a really good week.